Hi, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's session on myopia progression and its risk factors. I'm Shikha Sharma, Assistant Professor, Department of Optometry, Srinagar Mahavir University. First, I would like to welcome Professor Navneet Kumar, the Vice Principal of College of Paramedical Sciences, PMU. Also, I would like to invite the HOD of Optometry, Mr. Rakesh Yadav, and all the faculty members of Department of Optometry. Now, I would like to introduce our guest speaker, Mr. Sarbhujit Goswami. He has completed Bachelor in Optometry in 2017 from NSHM College of Management and Technology. I'm Optometry from Chitkara University, Punjab. He has working experience of two and a half years in CL Gupta Institute, Muradabad. Currently, he is working as faculty in Department of Optometry, Arkajan University, Jharkhand. Before we start today's session, I would like to highlight a few points. If you have any query, please type them into chat box. I will bring them up at the end of the session. And we will also have time for question answer at the end of the session. Now, without further ado, I will turn the time over to Mr. Sarvajit Goswami. Now, you may start the session, Sarvajit. Hello, am I audible to all of you? Yes, yes, Sarvajit, you are audible. Skip it up. Good evening, everyone. First of all, I'm very much grateful to all of you, especially the Jirthankar Mahavir University and the authorities to this give me the platform hood. to talk about a very important topic called myopia and its risk factors. So without any further delay, I'm just uh, sharing my screen to show the presentation. My presentation is visible to all of you? Yes, sir. OK. So today, the session is all about myopia progression. So as we know that myopia, which is uh, not been uh, very new to us, but yes, when we talk about myopia, the studies has been done with the several years. And the process of myopia progression is an ongoing study in which the studies are going on nowadays also. Before uh, starting the session, I would like to tell you that myopia is uh, not only a refractive error, what we assume from several years and uh, wants to correct with the spectacle, but uh, myopia is considered as a disease in which there are uh, very new pathology, a new complication arises with the passage of time. And uh, this will also make the research. Yeah. So uh, the myopia very fast and even the blindness. So I would like to share the presentation with all of you. First of all, yeah, though, what is the objective of today's session? So the objective of today's session is when we talk about an introduction and prevalence of myopia, then we have factors which are affecting the myopia, then the theories and progression of myopia, and lastly, the myopia control. So what is myopia? Myopia is a type of refractive error in which the parallel rays of light which comes from infinity comes to focus in front of the retina when accommodation is at rest. So that the particular definition we know from the past and we are knowing that the total eye power is greater than 60 diopter. So here when myopia comes in action, so the close objects looks clear, but distant objects appeared blurred. So this is what the normal uh, pathophysiology of the myopia. And uh, when this happens, the image will fall on the, in front of the retina and in the normal, it will fall on the retinal plane. So secondly, what is the prevalence of myopia? As you, you see in this slide, the 58% prevalence in the USA, 53% prevalence rate in the South America, 
65% prevalence rate in East Asia and 56% of prevalence rate in Europe. So this is the prevalence rate of myopia uh, with the passage of time from 2010 till now. If we talked about India, so approximately 25% of the urban school children are affected by the myopia. So basically uh, what the study shows in the prevalence rate that the urban population are mostly affected than the rural population. So if we talked about the recent study which has been takes place, which shows there is a production of 50% affected people by myopia in 2050. So you can see here that what is the alarming session of the myopia and why the myopia is a very hot topic uh, from the previous time and nowadays also in the eye care practitioners and optometrists. So the approximately the 50% people were affected by myopia in 2050. So that should be uh, considered as a very vital thing. And uh, we will discuss about the other uh, terminologies here. So the third one is the factors which affecting the myopia. What are the factors which will affect the myopia? So first of all, it's age, then agenda, then genetic factors, then ethnicity, then environment and work related approximately like a near work, extended near work, reading, high literacy, accommodation, or more time used in the uh, you know, screen. So uh, in the mobile or in the laptop when we are uh, using the screen and emetropization and under correction. These are the two very important things that comes in action when we are talking about a factors which will affect or trigger the myopia progression. So uh, let's start one by one. First of all, age. So this is from zero, one year, two year or three year and the Y axis is showing the myopia progression from zero to minus two. So here you can able to see that the progression of myopia is about uh, the first uh, six to seven year students or a child which begins from minus two to five and it goes on to here. And the th in the third year of age, that means in the third year of um, uh, their uh, age group, the myopia will progress into minus two adapter. Similarly happens with the second year, which is an eight year student, the N number, that means the number of uh, candidate they have taken is a It has been started that uh, myopial progression from minus 0 0.7, uh, 0.50 will rise up in the um, third year that means a visiting third year is approximately minus 1.5. Similarly, if you talked about nine year child, then it is also going to be increased from minus 0 0.5 to approximately minus one dot. So uh, myopia is going to be increased with the passage of time when the child age and height is growing according to that. So it is categorized into four parts. First one is the congenital myopia. Second one is the youth onset myopia. Third one is the early adult onset myopia. What the dog and doing? Third one is the late adult onset myopia. So congenital myopia is simply the myopia which is uh, being uh, done or maybe caused. By then there will be a youth onset myopia where there will be any school going children who are affected by the myopia very fast. Early adult onset myopia means the when the eyeball is increasing with the body shape and size, then uh, the process of emetropization will not stop at the particular point of time, but it will also further away to uh, progress the myopia. And the late adult onset myopia is the environmental and the lifestyle conditions that what we are living. So for example, if uh, a person or a child who is not having any kind of refractive error from four to five years, and after that he or she is using a screen or mobile or a laptop for an extended period of time, then it will also lead to a myopia progression. So this is all about the classification of myopia according to the age. Now, second one is gender. 
So the progression of myopia, which tends to begin and end early in the females. So this is the graph is showing that the females uh, race is mostly uh, affected more than the male, where the progression is starts from minus 0 0.5 to at uh, minus 0 0.75 or minus one data approximately. So this is also an study from where they have uh, recorded the myopic power from uh, one year, two year and three year, and they have been seen this. Now, the third thing is the genetic condition. That means the genetic factors. So uh, 39 genetic loci have been identified in the human genome, which may be associated with the refractive error and myopia. So gene is also involved in it. So one study was done in the Sydney, which is a Sydney myopia study, found that the influence of one eye parent was double the risk of myopia. And if the both parents are myopic, then it is increased the risk by eight times. So with this genetic influence, you can able to understand that the myopic study shows that if one of the parent is affected by myopia, then the risk is somehow double. Or if both the parents were affected, the risk is in a devastating factor nature. So this is about a genetic uh, influence of myopia. Now, now the ethnicity. Ethnicity shows that the study which is done by ARC ophthalmology, which shows the high prevalence rate in the Asians, Caucasians, and Hispanic, and uh, the lower prevalence rate in the white and African-Americans. And uh, the urban population are mostly affected as compared with the rural population. So myopia is affecting the urban areas, urban lifestyle, urban um, uh, society more than the rural population. Uh, there are some reasons which we will discuss in the further slides. So myopia is more common in the urban community than the rural community here. Now, the another factor, which is an environment and work related. This is a very important factor to understand that what is our environment in which environment we are practicing, we are doing our daily life activities, and what are our work, which are we related off. So as the study sh is, uh, shows that the evidence for a link between the near work and myopia progression continues to be reported in a wide range of population. So Parsinan has shown that near work and the short reading distance are significantly correlated with the increased myopia progression. Another study in Beijing, in the pediatric eye study, conducted in 15,066 school children with mean age of 13.2 plus minus minus 3.4 years. This study reported that the long reading duration, the shorter distance watching TV or computer, dim reading illumination are significantly associated with myopia. So how it goes, we have in the further slide. Now, undercorrection. Undercorrection is the very, you can say a new concept which is included in the factors of the myopia progression, where the study shows that undercorrection of myopia produces a myopic defocus during the distance viewing, which is reported to produce an increase instead of decrease in the myopic progressions. So here we need to understand two things, that is what is hyperopic defocus and what is myopic defocus. So let me tell you that hyperopic defocus simply means when we born, we are not, our eyes are not normal. We are in the hypermetropic condition. So according to the passage of time, it will go to the normal stage, what we call a myopia, uh, sorry, an emetropia, where the ocular structures ocular apparatus are normal. Then it will again go to the myopic condition. So whenever there will be an hyperopic defocus, then the eyeball wants to make the object image in the retinal plane. For that, the eyeball tends to increase. The axial length, the diameter is going to be increased, which will lead to a bigger eyeball size and myopia progression. So this undercorrection is very, uh, very uh, common and very new uh, topic here in the factors, where the study shows that uh, the study done by the Chung et al. at Vision Research 2002 
it's a two year follow up study where the all the participants were under corrected to 2040 with a plus minus of a 0.75 adapter so the under corrected group will show that increased myopia and axial length compared to the fully corrected group so in this study the groups were divided into two parts where the patients who are under corrected shows a increased myopia and the axial length as compared to the fully corrected group now we will talk about the another thing here which is called theories and progression so what are the theories which is given in the myopic field first is the accommodative lag theory second one is the mechanical tension theory in which there will be a role of uh, ciliary body and choroid and accommodation then the third one will be the concept of emetropization the concept of emetropization is also a very important and interesting uh, theory here uh the fourth one will be the peripheral refraction so the most common accepted theories used to explain how the myopia progresses is a mechanical tension theory a peripheral refraction and a lag of accommodation so here the binocular vision or an accommodation which also plays a role other than the increased axial length so we will see one by one so first of all the lag of accommodation so what is lag of accommodation for example suppose if uh, my, some patient's eye is able to do the near activity and if the near activity demands plus 3 diopter of accommodation let's assume so if the patient's eye is only able to provide minus 2.5 diopter of accommodation so the 0.5 diopter of accommodation which is a left behind will be the lag of accommodation because the patient's eye is not able to uh, fulfill the accommodation demand so that will be the lag of accommodation so high lag of accommodation during the near work will cause foveal hyperopic retinal blur so foveal hyperopic retinal blur is simply correlated with the myopia progression here where the eye is not able to focus the object for that 0.5 diopter of accommodation the eyeball needs to tend big and its axial length is going to be increased in order to focus the image on the foveal plane so that will cause a myopia progression so that it uh, induces an abnormal axial growth of the eye which is leading to myopia and myopes have a reduced accommodative response which compared to the emetropes and the treatment of the myopic children with plus lens for near works so in this a uh, lack of accommodation i can uh, say that the treatment modality is the bifocal and the progressive addition lenses so for that you need to check the lag of accommodation the ortho optic exercises or you need to evaluate the ortho optic evaluation also simply given glasses is not only the option we want to treat the patient beyond the prescribed glasses so uh, this is the picture of a bifocal lenses and a progressive lenses where we we know very well that a progressive lenses will clear the distance intermediate and the near zone where the bifocal will clear the near area so there is a study which is called uh, the correction of myopia evaluation trial the collection uh, the correction of myopia evaluation trial which is a comet study in which the researchers enrolled the 469 subjects aged from 6 to 11 with myopic prescriptions between minus 1.25 and 4.5 spherical equivalent so there are two groups here also one arm of the study had a single vision distance correction while other has a progressive addition lenses with plus 2 diopter additions so the difference they get in the result is only of 0.20 diopter at the end of 3 year of evaluation so higher treatment if we say the higher treatment chances of treatment a better treatment in the comet study evaluated to the subgroups who are 
having the accommodation lag and esophoria or the lower myopia so a study suggest that if a patient is suffering from lag of accommodation esophoria or having a lower myopia that can be treated with uh, progressive addition lenses but if we talked about only the myopia or you can say the high myopic cases the difference they are uh, showing in their uh, research work is 0.20 adapter at the end of 3 years so this is what shows that the accommodative lag and esotropia or the lower myopia should be recommended with the higher treatment of uh, you know the bifocal and the progressive addition lenses so this is about the accommodative lag what i'm talking about where the foveal hyperopic retinal blur resulting from the reduced accommodative response at the near so here you can able to see in this area where there will be a uh, image that should be fall on but it will be fall here because of the accommodative lag problem so when there will be an accommodative lag i wants to clear this image in the retinal plane so it will increase their axial length which will lead to myopia progression so another hair theory is the mechanical tension so mechanical tension is not a very new th theory so as we know that the eye respond to the transient change in the axial length following the shorter period of accommodation where accommodation or the contraction of the ciliary muscles also play a role which makes a result in the forward and inward pulling of the choroid so ciliary choroidal tension that restricts the equatorial growth of the eye that decreases the circumference of the sclera leading to more prolate eye shape and ultimately the elongation of axial length so here also there will be an elongation of the axial length due to the mechanical tension which will cause by the accommodation if the person is not able to see the near object or the distance object very clearly with the normal without accommodation changes so this is the schematic representation of the mechanical tension theory where you can see when the eye is not able to focus the object on the retina when the image is focused or the uh, light rays will be focused in front of the retina then the ciliary muscle contract and respond to do the accommodation by the crystalline lens which will restrict the equatorial growth of the eyeball and there will be a axial elongation which is leading to myopia now the theory comes which is called emetropization this is not the normal emetropization what we have read about that how the eyeball grows but this is is this particular uh this diagram or emetropization model was given by norton which will gives you an idea that how emetropization also plays a vital role in the myopic progression so in this particular model you can able to see when there will be an visual stimulus a defocus then there will be an retinal responses that retinal responses will be communicated to sclera and there will be an remodeling of the sclera takes place which will doing the creep rate of the fibrous tissue in the sclera creep rate here means the extensibility the extensibility of the sclera which will finally leads to axial elongation rate and myopic progression here accommodation also plays a role particularly when accommodation comes in action that will also lead to myopic progression so what emetropization model says that when the eye is in the growing phase when the eye is in the growing phase the eye is in the hyperopic condition when it reaches to the emetropia that process we call emetropization and after that emetropization there are certain influences factors there are certain impulses which will provide it to the eyeball to extend further from the emetropization point that means there should be an arrest at the emetropization area but due to the extra influencing impulses that 
immetropization process has not been stopped there it will grow further which will lead to myopic progression so ocular growth which is regulated by the retinal responses to the optical image and the accommodation by its influence on the retinal image quality plays an indirect role in the metropization so this particular uh, research has been done in the mammals or in the lower animals also uh, to to show that how metropization will also lead to abnormal metropization i'm talking about here when the metrop abnormal metropization will lead you to the myopic progression and that is the main reason where we are saying that why the person is having a uh, myopic changes or refractive error which is going to be increased with the passage of time for example as we say that we have seen many cases that the patient does not have myopia from congenital one and the patient is very normal to 3 to 4 years after that it will increases the myopic progression so that is the main factor where the immetropization arrest should be there but without arresting the metropization it will moves further because of the extra impulses given to the eyeball which will lead to myopic progression now the third one is the peripheral refraction peripheral refraction is also very important to understand that when we are talking about that after the correction cannot say that myopia will go further but what happen after the correction of myopia suppose a patient comes to your clinic patient is having minus 2 diopter of myopia you have been corrected minus 2.2 diopter of myopia with the uh, glasses the best glasses whatever you you have prescribed after one year when the patient come the patient is having minus 2.5 diopter myopia after uh, 1.5 year or 2 year 2 diopter of myopia 3 diopter of myopia 4 diopter of myopia why is it happen why the progression is not stopping when you are giving the prescribed glasses so there are certain factors which is also plays a very important role when you are prescribed glasses that's fine but you need to also focus on other factors so here is the other factor one of the other factor is a peripheral refraction so peripheral refraction defocus has been suggested to play a very significant role in the development of myopia several meta analyses reported a significant reduction of myopia progression with the treatment that reduces the peripheral hyperopic defocus that is an orthokeratology that is orthokelensis a crt therapy and a center distance multifocal soft contact lenses so the peripheral hyperopic defocus means when we are correcting a patient we are correcting the fovea what about the corresponding retinal areas what about the peripheral retina that should also comes in mind that should be considered by uh, by the uh, eye care practitioner while treating the myopic patient so that is about um, a peripheral refraction is so here in this picture you can able to see this is a schematic representation of the peripheral uh, theory where the light ray the the axial rays the comes which is directed here in the foveal area but these two areas one area which is beyond the foveal plane or the retinal plane on one area which is in front of the retinal plane so beyond the retinal plane as we know it is a hyperopic defocus by which it stimulates the increase in the axial length of the eyeball and this is the myopic defocus which is caused by the under correction of myopia what is our empirical concept so that is also will cause a myopic progression so whenever you get the patient of myopia do not under correct the myopia do not over correct the myopia give the appropriate power to the patient so this is the question arises when we talked about an peripheral refraction why does myopia progress even after the correction so uncorrected myopia as i told you in an uncorrected myopic eye the image of the distant object comes to a focal point in front of the central retina but behind the peripheral retina 
that eye is near sighted but actually may be far sighted in the peripheral retina and that peripheral hyperopic defocus will stimulate the progression of myopia and leads to a high myopic category and a pathological condition like a macular degeneration and patient may not able to see so this is what happens actually basically in the teenage groups okay so when we have talked about the factors which are affecting the myopia the theories and progression of the myopia how it does now the topic come that how to control myopia or myopia control now in myopia control there are certain things that we need to understand first one is the lifestyle modification then the corneal reshapings what we say crt or orthocal lenses bifocal or progressive addition lenses in the patients who are myopic and also on a lack of accommodation and isophoric and medicated eye drops like atropine the study has been done in the atropine uh, to reduce the myopia or to retard the myopia so here we go so myopia can be controlled by the following measures environmental modification which is very important nowadays spectacles and contact lenses and pharmacological therapies so environmental modification when we are talking about environmental modification we generally say outdoor activity we need to uh, advise our patient that the patient should go and do the outdoor games outdoor activities and maybe in the uh, they have to be present in the sunlight and sunlight activities are considered good because of the spatial resolution the effect of sunlight the frequency of light which gives a patient a very natural condition to play to grow to do the activities so here i want to mention one thing as we know that uh, whenever we are talking about study we have heard about that we always have to study in bright light why is it so there is a condition there is a uh, there is some kind of connection between the bright light or a uh, very high stimulated light with the myopic progression what is it so as i told you the example earlier for example if i want to do the near work and i want plus three adapter of accommodation to do that near work my eyeball only capable of giving me my 2.5 adapter of accommodation so 0.5 adapter of accommodation is left 0.5 adapter of accommodation is managed by taken over by depth of focus what is depth of focus so whenever there will be a bright light our pupil size is going to be constrict and when the pupil size is going to be constrict it will gives you a depth of focus that is the reason why we say that we need to do the activity in the bright light so when the depth of focus providing u.5 adapter of accommodation then the load in the accommodation area will be less so your eye will be prevented off by getting the myopic progression now the cocoa the use of amber filters there are number of filters or block block blue block conditions blue block screens that has been come in role nowadays in the latest studies where environmental modification modification is very important here in the lockdown period we are very much uh, you know uh, kind of fair uh, favorable the conditions of uh, zoom meeting or you know online meeting online classes online activities our mobile and laptops we are engaged with it we have extended the near work so when we are extending the near work that will simply lead to a kind of fuel to the myopic progression so we need to think about it we need to advise our patient to change the environmental modification the lifestyle modification what we are talking about and that will may help in the reduction of myopic progression now the second mode of uh sir actually you have mentioned that cocoa will help to reduce the yes. uh, sorry control the myopia progression can you please yes. explain it like how it is actually the alertness of the of the cocoa will gives you 
a sharpest vision when we see that when we, our mind is alert and we are alerted by something whatever important we are doing then there will be and dopamine release which will inhibit the myopic progression in the retinal amacrine cells so cocoa or the any kind of uh, you know in the normal day to day activity when we are very much busy in our important things we are taking the tea coffee which will stimulating our nervous system that will lead to a reduction in the myopic progression in the study says am i clear yes yes you are thank you okay now uh, what we are talking about is the spectacle and the contact lenses so as i told you the bifocal and the multifocal glasses or the contact lenses will also help orthocal lenses are very specialized lenses which we are known as the corneal reshaping which will uh, reduce the uh, shape of the cornea okay here we need to understand there are number of uh, brand that comes by the crisal lenses zeiss acelor the glasses which help the bifocal lenses the multifocal lenses the progressive addition lenses which helps the reduction in the myopic progression but there are some studies which are shows that the contact lenses when we are talking about will not gives you a permanent solution so i want to share that study with all of you okay this is the myo vision i specialized uh, glasses by the zeiss company which will help in the myopic uh, reduction in the myopic progression so this is the uh, um, research study the contact lens and the you can say the clamp study in 2004 has been done have found that the providing children with the alignment of fitting rgp that is the rigid gas permeable contact lenses flattened their corneal curvature by about 0.5 diopter within 2 months so this is study which is particularly based on the rgp contact lenses so children who wore rgp for 3 years had corneas that returned to the baseline curvature that means there is a rebound you can understand whenever the fitting has been takes place whenever the treatment has been given to the patient definitely it will help to change the structure of the cornea but that was not a permanent solution which study shows that it will again rebound back to the baseline curvature but soft contact lens fairer corneas is steep in 0.13 after beyond baseline so this is the study that has been done with respect to the contact lenses and the myopic progression treatment another uh, study here which is called an achieve study the achieve study the adolescent and the child health initiative encourage the vision empowerment found that that soft contact lenses do not cause a clinically relevant increase in the myopia which is somehow basically gives you a temporary solution but what happens if patient comes to you after the treatment of one year or two years myopia it has been increased or my myopia is going to be rebound back so here we need to understand one thing that whenever you have treated the patient and, and when the patient comes back to you after one year or 1.5 year or 2 year then you need to check either the myopia has been increased myopia is same or that has been decreased anything which is beyond 0.75 is a progression in the myopia no reduction that means your treatment is not working so this is what an study shows okay so the third one is the pharmacological therapies where the anti muscularin agents like atropine 0.01% pyrazepine will help in the reduction of myopic progression basically the dopamine that will prevent the myopic shift if you see this picture then the 0.8 difference by instilling the atropine 0.01 percent which will help the patient not from actually there are two concept here first concept of giving the atropine is to relax the accommodation to arrest the accommodation on that place that means accommodation will not play a role and that will not lead to my progression or elongation of the axial lens the second concept the second idea of giving the atropine is to just uh you know the brain will release a dopamine which will prevent the myopic shift in the retinal cells 
which help the patient in the most of the cases the in the atom study that is the atropine in the myopic condition study shows that atropine therapy will also help it but there should be a constant follow up of the patient because if you are only giving the atropine maybe the patient comes with a retardation or a reduction uh, sorry there will be a myopic progression other than reduction so one two studies has also been done where the researcher has been seen that atropine is helping the patient in the early phase of life that means uh, uh, in the early one to two years but after that it will again rebound back so giving atropine 0.01% along with it if you provide your patient myofocal or uh, progressive addition lenses if there is a slight um, chances of uh, accommodative lag or esophoria then it will be better and it would be help you more so what will be the take home message in the myopic progression risk factor myopic control myopia should never be under or over correct glasses should be not be prescribed in the process of metropization that means if a baby comes to you for eye evaluation if you are prescribing the glasses either it is a hyperopic condition or the myopic condition if you are interfering in the metropization that will definitely lead to myopia progression and the third and very important for a covid situation that is a lifestyle modification which will slow the rate of myopia progression though myopic progression or myopia control is not a very limited topic there are a number of things whatever uh, we have seen uh this is not a complete one but it will not cannot be completed in one session definitely so this is all about my peer progression risk factor and my peer control these are the references so here i am uh, ending my presentation i would like to take the questions if anyone is having regarding the myopia progression or myopia okay so thank you so much sarvajit for such an informative talk hope everyone have enjoyed the session so i'm seeing few of the questions in chat box yes so i would like to bring up few of the questions yes ma'am uh, sure. first question is uh, what should be the time limit for using display to avoid myopia progression time limit for using what Uh, what should be the time limit for using display to avoid avoid myopia progression okay so as we know that excess of anything is bad so a study shows that if you are using the screen which is approximately 1 to 2 hours then definitely it will not increase your myopia but on that particular condition you also need to consider certain things that means ambient light you cannot lay down and see the screen your lights were not off while you are using the display so these are the three four points which is very important and obviously the screen time should be one to two hours or more than that will also cause an accommodative accommodative spasm and accommodative fatigue which will lead to myopia progression okay and next question is um, why myopia evidence is less in white people is it related uh, with the melanin hormone malignant uh, mel melanin hormone is also play a very important role here as we know that the distribution of disease is somehow different in the geographical condition as for example we are asian we are having a different lifestyle the americans are white people having a different lifestyle caucasian or hispanic having a different lifestyle so the disease is not particularly dependent upon the melanin pigment but it is also depend upon the environmental condition because our india is having a several seasons what the americans does not have and our lifestyle is something very different from them so that is the main particular reason of myopia progression in the east asian regions and the uh, you can say the asian population okay now next question is emetropic also having the hyperopic defocus emetropic patient does not have an hyperopic defocus as i told you that uh, when the emetropization process goes on the person is having 
hypropic condition itself by birth which will lead to emetropization at a certain point of time where eyeball is going to be increased to attend that area and that particular condition is emetropia in emetropia there is no hypropic defocus okay and uh, the last question is why we are giving uh, the atropin 0.01% is there any reason yes as i told you atropine is a pharmaceutical treatment in the progression in reduction in the progression of myopia two ideas for giving the atropine first one to arrest the accommodation to relax the accommodation there second one it will also uh, increase the dopamine level to prevent the myopic shift in the retinal amacrine ganglion cells so these are the two basic idea for giving the atropine treatment which will definitely the study shows that it will reduce the progression of myopia okay there is one more question yes. um, as you mentioned in your slide under the correction with glasses leads of myopic defocus that will cause of myopic progression but ortho k lenses also leads peripheral myopic defocus uh i think the participant has confused between two things first of all under correction of myopia is different thing and the ortho k lenses having a peripheral refraction is a different thing what we are saying that whenever the patient comes to your clinic under correct the myopia if the practice was goes on if the patient is having minus 2 diopter we are prescribing minus 1.5 but the study shows under correction or a myopic defocus will also lead to myopic progression so do not under correct myopia second thing when we talked about the optics of ortho k we are saying that ortho k is not only reshaping the central corneal zone but also gives an implementation factors to the peripheral refraction peripheral refraction which is left by the practitioner earlier though the reason come even after the correction of myopia it will lead to my progression because we are not considered the peripheral refraction on that time okay so um, now we are done with the all the questions thank yeah. you sir vijit for such a detailed explanation now thank i would like so to much, call our hod sir for words of thanks so hello i am adol yes sir so it was really nice talk uh, no if you'll talk about myopia from many of the study we came to know that 50% um, of the world population will become myopic by 2050 and even due to this uh, online learning it may uh, increase the number so now myopia is not just a topic but it has become a course to study on even yes, many institute even many institute of the university are offering this course to study on like we have uh, you might have heard the name of uh, Bren Hoden Institute Vision Institute it is offering the courses on myopia and myopia control also many of the myopia control strategy are available as you have explained in your slides in the form of eye drop or in the form of contact lenses practical lenses when soft lens are available for the uh, myopia control by Cooper Vision, by the name of MI site one day, and company claim that these lenses also slow down the myopia progression. Apart from this, yes, you have explained in the slide ortho K lenses, which are broadly used nowadays for the myopia control. So thank you so much, uh, Sarbojit ji, for your detailed and informative talk. Thank you so much for covering all the you know. Uh, questions which was there in chat box. Thank you for being associated with the Thangkar Mahavir University Department of Optometry. And thank you all the participants for joining with us. Hope you have enjoyed the session because uh, Sarbojit ji has covered all the topic of uh, topic related to myopia and, it, and control, myopia control. Now it will be our regular exercise to conduct a webinar on different topics related to uh, optometry. So we are seeking your support by joining this session in future too. Thank you. Our Thank host. You so much, sir.
Thank you. Thank I am you. very much grateful to you, Shikha ma'am, and the authority and Tirthankar Mahavi University for giving me the platform to share my knowledge. And whatever I am uh, studied out regarding a myopia progression or myopia with the help of uh, my seniors or my practice. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you the you. host. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, the host of the session, Ms. Sikha ma'am, uh, and all the faculty members of our department for your kind cooperation. Once again, thank you, Sarvajit ji, and all the members. Now we are done with the session. Uh,